Hey Star Wars fans, my name is Prince and I'm an urban acolyte. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about Benicio Del Toro and his role in Star Wars Episode Eight. So if you recall a few days ago, I posted a video uh, from I was raised to do one thing.com, which is a Star Wars uh, fan blog. And they posted an article stating that Benicio Del Toro's character would be a general who works for the New Republic. He would be some really hard as nails uh, military person within the New Republic military. Now, as it turns out, I just found an article from StarWarsNews.net, which is a fairly reliable aggregator uh, for Star Wars news. And they're saying something completely different. So spoiler warnings, um, if you're trying to go into episode eight completely spoiler free, but they kind of start back from the very beginning uh, when Benicio Del Toro was first announced to have a part in Star Wars episode eight. And there was news coming from inside sources claiming that he would be allegedly playing a villain. Of course, Benicio Del Toro also made statements that he could possibly be playing a villain character in Star Wars Episode Eight, And that started a lot of rumors. I know there was a very vocal minority uh, when I first started my channel back in the winter, stating that Benicio Del Toro would in fact be playing a villain. He was gonna be playing an older Ezra Bridger uh, and possibly a member of the Knights of Ren. Um, in the video that I posted on that, there was a, allegedly a leak from an Italian news source that stated that there would be a lightsaber battle between Kylo Ren, Rey, Luke Skywalker, and another force user who has a red lightsaber. And they believed that that individual would be the character played by Benicio Del Toro. So the question is, is Benicio Del Toro playing this general who works for the Republic or is he a villain? And if he is a villain, is he a possible force user one of Supreme Leader Snoke's other students or a member of the Knights of Ren and or both Snoke student and a member of the Knights of Ren or is he something else? So StarWarsNews.net reports that Benicio Del Toro had an interview with Grazia Magazine, which is an Italian magazine, and he was asked if Star Wars Episode Eight would be a movie that he would take his five-year-old daughter Delilah to see. His answer was, well, who knows? We'll see. I've never played an intergalactic villain. I mean, seriously, perhaps the film will not be suitable for her, but my dream is to take her with me, at least to the premiere, on the red carpet. So this is starting a new batch of speculations because Benicio Del Toro allegedly said that he might be playing an intergalactic villain. Now, someone translated that article from Italian into English, and based on their translation, it sounds like Benicio Del Toro could possibly have been joking. But the question remains, why would he joke about being some kind of intergalactic villain? Why would he say that it might not be a movie that's suitable to take his five-year-old daughter? Well, for that second question, I can say that we know off the top that episode eight is gonna be a bit of a darker film. I mean, we've got rumors of an assassination attempt on Princess Leia. There's this uh, showdown between the Knights of Ren, Kylo Ren, Luke Skywalker and Rey, possibly on Oct 2. We don't know what could happen to Rey. I think Mike Zero ran a video saying that uh, Rey would get her arm cut off, and that's something that I don't wanna see, and that's nothing against Mike Zero. He's got a great channel, but I, I don't wanna see Daisy Ridley get her arm or her hand cut off. I, I just don't wanna see that. So my point being is that episode eight is gonna be a darker film. Of course, we've still got the question about, well, who is Benicio Del Toro playing? Well, Slash Film also ran this article where they basically reposted the article that was in StarWarsNews.net, but they put a major spoiler at the bottom of their article. So this is fair warning if you really don't want any spoilers. So according to Slash Film and whoever their source is, they say that Benicio Del Toro's character will be a former bounty hunter who becomes a Republic politician who survived the attack on Hosnian Prime because he was off world at the time. 
Now, this is something that I've been thinking about for a while. Some of you have asked me, why would the First Order destroy uh, Hosnian Prime and all of the senators uh, who belong to the Galactic Senate when they have centrist senators who were on Hosnian Prime at that time? And my thinking is, well, we've still got Coruscant, right? If you want to bring back the Empire, but you want to correct the flaws of the Empire under Palpatine, as we're hearing in the Bloodline novel, then what better way than to get rid of the New Republic? You've still got Coruscant and you've still got senators. If you give all of these centrist senators who are uh, basically operating for the First Order within the Galactic Senate, if they all suddenly happen to be off world when everything goes kaboom, well, now you install your new leader at Coruscant where you had the Galactic Empire being run before, you've got a Senate, it's all the surviving senators who just happen to be centrist, so they can legally vote in uh, Supreme Leader Snoke or whoever you want your first senator to be. Now something that came up to me was, well, how cool would it be if Benicio Del Toro turned out to be Boba Fett? Now, Benicio Del Toro is about 49 years old, and Boba Fett at this time would be about 63, 64, somewhere in his early 60s. That's if we uh, date him anywhere from seven to 10 years old when we first see him in episode two. Uh, he's probably a teenager by the end of the Clone Wars, and when we see him in the original saga, he's in his early 30s. So you jump forward 30 years, uh, there you have, he's uh, in his early 60s. Now, of course, that raises the question, did he survive? Did he make it out of the Sarlacc pit? We learn in the Life Debt novel that uh, because of the destruction of uh, Jabba the Hutt's little pleasure boat, uh, the pollution, whatever, from that destruction actually killed the Sarlacc. And we know that somehow somebody scavenged uh, Boba Fett's armor out of the Sarlacc, so I mean, do you, did he survive right now? We don't know. But if Benicio Del Toro would have turned out to be Boba Fett, then that would pretty much confirm that he does survive. Now, how did I make that jump? Well, I based that on the fact that Boba Fett had a close relationship with Vader and with the Empire, right? And if Boba Fett is supposed to be some kind of bounty hunter who is turned Republic Senator and he's allegedly gonna have some kind of meeting with Kylo Ren at some point in the film. Well, to me that screams this dude is a centrist and a uh, past bounty hunter, had close ties to the Empire. I can think of one other bounty hunter, but that bounty hunter was a woman and we meet her in Lando Calrissian's comic book. Um, so I don't think it would be her. Anyway, that's uh, really interesting stuff for us to think on. And it adds a new component to this equation of trying to figure out who Benicio Del Toro's character might be. So what do you guys think? Do you still think that Benicio Del Toro is going to turn out to be a force user, possibly Ezra Bridger? Uh, do you think he's this uh, Republic uh, military officer? Or do you think he's a bounty hunter? who is a centrist senator who could possibly be some kind of rogue or a double agent working for the First Order? What, what do you guys think? So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below and I'll be checking back for that. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so that you can take your first steps towards becoming an urban acolyte. Um, I'm participating in Vlogist, which is a vlog every day in August. So I'm trying to post videos every day this month. In my next video, I'm going to look at Anthony Bresnikan's article on Bodhi Rook. And I've been thinking about doing another video, taking another look at Ray. But we'll see how that goes because there's all kind of new stuff coming out this week leading up to the Star Wars Rogue One trailer. And I hope to have a reaction video up to that sometime Thursday uh, whenever I get to see the trailer. So that's all I've got for this video. Thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing and may the force be with you always.